What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. Over the past couple years, electric vehicles and renewable energy have been one of the hottest areas of the stock market. Governments across the globe have committed to investing trillions of dollars in renewable energy over the next decade and phasing out traditional fossil fuels. And to some extent, this is already happening. According to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, global renewable energy investment surpassed $500 billion for the first time in 2020 and is expected to continue increasing over the next decade. At the same time, oil investment is expected to decline as governments tighten environmental regulations and electric vehicles reduce oil demand. This sentiment has already been factored into the share prices of both renewable energy companies and oil companies alike. Over the past five years, the ICLN Clean Energy ETF has handily outperformed the S&P 500, returning 160%. During the same time period, the XLE Energy ETF, which is comprised mainly of oil stocks, has significantly underperformed, losing 3% of its value. The market appears to be pricing in a scenario in which global governments will finally get serious about fighting climate change over the next decade, and fossil fuel companies will slowly die out. However, recent developments suggest that this view might be extremely naive. Overly ambitious emission reduction targets have caused catastrophic power shortages in both Asia and Europe, with over 100 million people in China currently facing severe electricity rations. These shortages have exposed the harsh reality that the transition to renewable energy will take much longer than policymakers had originally hoped for. On the oil demand side, electric vehicles only made up 2.5% of new vehicle sales globally in 2019, and it will take multiple decades before they make up the majority of cars on the road. Counterintuitively, oil companies may be the biggest beneficiaries of the shift to renewable energy. A lack of investment in oil exploration could cause a massive multi-year bull run in oil prices. Over the past year, electric vehicle stocks such as Tesla have skyrocketed in value, and for good reason. EVs are the future, and their adoption is increasing rapidly in developed countries. But enthusiasm around EVs has perhaps gotten out of hand and even fraudulent companies like Nikola have been able to achieve multi-billion dollar valuations. The transition to EVs will take many years to gain serious momentum, and it will likely take multiple decades before they make up the majority of cars on the road. According to consulting firm McKinsey, EVs only made up 2.5% of global new vehicle sales in 2019. It is true that this number will increase substantially over time. However, the average vehicle stays on the road for about 12 years. Even if EVs took 100% market share of new vehicles starting today, it would take 12 years to completely eliminate internal combustion engine vehicles. And even if every single new car buyer wanted to buy an EV, it would be physically impossible to supply them all. Even today, with EVs only constituting a few percentage market share of new car sales, lithium and cobalt producers are struggling to meet demand for EV batteries. Lithium prices have doubled since November of 2020, which is a big problem because the battery is the most expensive piece of an electric vehicle. There simply isn't enough lithium supply at the moment to fuel a substantial shift to EVs, and this will probably be the case for many years. At the same time, countries such as India, which has more than 1 billion people, are rapidly developing. As these countries become richer, a greater share of their population will be able to afford cars, the vast majority of which will have internal combustion engines. Increases in gasoline demand from India alone could easily offset the gradual shift to EVs in developed countries for the next decade. Air travel also makes up a significant portion of oil demand. While this was dampened by the pandemic, air travel is expected to grow substantially over the next decade, as poor countries become richer and more people use air travel for tourism. While there are some startups working on tiny electric planes, it's highly unlikely that we will see electric commercial long-haul flights within our lifetimes and imagine how big of a battery it would take to power a cargo ship from China to the US. This is obviously a long ways off. Oil will continue to play a vital role in the global energy mix for decades to come. The International Energy Agency expects global oil demand to completely recover to pre-pandemic levels by 2022, and continue increasing from there with most of this growth coming from developing countries. In fact, these estimates may even be conservative. Oil demand this summer in the US, China, and Europe have already exceeded 2019 levels. So what does this mean for oil prices? Just like any other commodity, the price is determined by supply and demand. Constrained oil supply coupled with a strong rebound in demand from the pandemic lows have pushed oil prices well above pre-pandemic levels. And there is reason to believe that this trend will continue pushing prices up even higher over the next few years. When oil prices went negative in 2020, oil companies around the world significantly reduced their capital expenditures to conserve cash. According to market research firm Fitch Solutions, 
capital expenditures from oil companies is expected to remain below 2019 levels until 2025. Remember that oil demand is expected to recover to pre-pandemic levels by 2022. Oil companies spend billions of dollars drilling new wells and investing in new rigs. After a few years, these wells run dry and they must drill new wells to maintain their production. If oil companies want to maintain their production levels, they would need to increase their capital expenditures to above 2019 levels to make up for underinvestment in 2020. But they're doing just the opposite. They're cutting back on spending and letting their wells deplete. There are two main reasons for this. Many ESG-focused investors are demanding that these oil companies invest in renewable energy. This reduces the amount of money that they will spend on oil and gas exploration. In fact, earlier this year, an activist hedge fund elected new members to ExxonMobil's board of directors to push for more green energy investment. Investors are nervous about the long-term future of oil and fear government climate change regulations. As we've explained early in this video, we think that this fear is far overblown and oil demand will increase for many years to come. But nevertheless, the market has punished oil stocks with dirt cheap valuations. Oil executives know that they aren't getting credit for investing in new wells, so they're instead taking advantage of their cheap stock prices to buy back shares. These combined factors could very possibly lead to a situation where oil supply growth undershoots demand growth significantly at current prices. And when demand exceeds supplies, prices rise. In fact, Goldman Sachs thinks that Brent crude oil will increase to $90 per barrel by the end of 2021 on the back of strong demand growth and supply constraints. One commodity that could benefit even more than oil is natural gas. As countries decrease coal production in favor of renewable energy, they end up needing a lot more natural gas. This is because natural gas power plants can be quickly turned online when the wind is not blowing or the sun is not shining. For example, the UK has invested billions of dollars over the past few years to build massive offshore wind farms in the North Sea, which account for roughly 20% of the country's electricity generation in 2020. In 2021, wind speeds slowed down significantly, and wind electricity generation was cut to just 7% of total consumption. Utility companies use natural gas to fill in the gap, which has caused prices to surge, increasing almost sixfold since this spring. A similar situation is playing out in China. Ironically, the shift towards renewable energy has made the world even more dependent on natural gas. This dependency will likely increase over the coming years as countries gradually wean themselves off of coal. So what does this mean for oil and natural gas stocks? Oil stocks generally track the price of oil very closely. When oil prices tanked in 2020, oil stocks followed on the way down. Oil prices, which are represented by the blue line, have rebounded strongly over the past few months and now sit squarely above pre-pandemic levels. However, the XLE Energy ETF, which is represented by the red line, has lagged behind oil prices and is still below its 2019 levels. One major contributor of this is so-called ESG investing. Many institutional investors, such as public pension funds, are divesting from fossil fuel-related stocks as they believe that this will help fight climate change. For example, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink has committed to divesting from polluting companies and their actively managed funds if they do not improve their carbon footprint over the next few years. Individual investors are also hopping onto the ESG bandwagon. About one-third of millennials often or exclusively use investments that take ESG factors into account, compared to 19% of Gen Z, 16% of Gen X, and 2% of baby boomers. With so many investors dumping oil stocks, it's no wonder that they have lagged the broader market, as well as oil prices. However, these ESG-focused investors may be making a massive mistake. In the long run, the only determinant of returns of the stock are its future cash flows. It doesn't matter if BlackRock and millennials refuse to buy it. In fact, it's actually good for long-term investors if the stock price remains low, because it allows oil companies to buy back their own shares at cheap prices. And in the long run, shareholders can be rewarded with high dividend yields, even if their share price never appreciates. While this video is not financial advice, we think that many oil and natural gas stocks are significantly undervalued. A favorable commodity price outlook and dirt-cheap valuations could see this sector outperform the broader market over the next few years. Our favorite way to play this is with Occidental Petroleum, which is a highly cash-generative company and offers leverage exposure to both oil and natural gas prices. If you want to learn more, feel free to read our research report on the company. This can be viewed for free on our public access Patreon portfolio, link in the description below. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about the outlook for oil stocks? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.